Well, hello and welcome back. Uh, keep your head up here for our, our second day of cross sections, and today we're going to focus specifically on different types of triangles. So we're going to attack three different triangles today, and I just want to quickly review, um, specifically in a right triangle, the names of the pieces of the triangle. The one that's across from our right angle, hopefully you recall, is called the hypotenuse. And then the two other sides of the triangle, they refer to those as legs of the triangle. Um, often you'll hear the word base. Base, of course, means the one on the bottom, so I would describe this one as the base of the triangle, as this one would describe the height of the triangle. All right, so hopefully we can get those terms out of the way. So let's go ahead and focus on our first known cross-section, and that is an isosceles right triangle <clears throat> with the leg on the base. So there's quite a few words in here. Obviously isosceles, um, which we'll just off to the side, means two equal sides along with two equal angles. Um, right is implying that you have a right angle in your triangle. Um, and the leg is on the base. So if I were to take this cross section, like so, what I'm saying is the leg is sitting across like this, and oops, try to picture this coming out at you. Okay, and this is the base there, and you got to kind of picture it coming out 3D at you. Again, I'll have a better visual in class, um, but the base is going across the bottom there, that leg. All right, now I can't stress enough. I think it's a no-brainer if you draw out the picture to describe it. So let's go ahead and draw an isosceles right triangle with the leg on the base. So here's my right. My isosceles is implying that it has two equal legs. So go ahead and mark the two legs equal. And now if you do that, it's almost impossible to screw up. What do you know about the base and the height in an isosceles right triangle with leg on the base? Well, clearly, if you drew the picture and marked it, you would say that they are equal to each other. So the whole key to solving this problem is that when you draw it, you realize that the height is equal to the base. Okay, and again, that's the whole key in an isosceles right triangle. The height equals the base. All right, the second cross-section you need to be familiar with is an isosceles right triangle, so it sounds the same again. Um, I've got two equal sides and a right angle, but this time the hypotenuse is on the base. So again, I'll try to sketch it out a little visually for you here. What I'm trying to say is the hypotenuse is going across the base, and kind of the right angle is popping up out at you. So again, I think it's a no-brainer to slow down and sketch it out. Okay, hypotenuse is going across the base, put the hypotenuse on the bottom. The right angle comes across from it. And again, I'm going to mark my two equal sides. I'm implying that this side and this side are equal. Okay, now let's label a B for base at the bottom and draw in the height. Remember your height, your altitude needs to be perpendicular, straight up and down, not measured sideways. So here's how I think of it. Since it was isosceles and right, that's telling me each of these base angles is 45 degrees. Okay, now when I split the altitude and I drew that in, I took that upper 90 degree angles and split that in half. So now each of these angles is 45 degrees. So I've basically created two more isosceles triangles. And what that's telling me is that if this angle and this angle are congruent, so are the sides across from them. This side is congruent to this side. Okay, now this side that I just shaded here is how much of the base? I would say that that is half of the base. Therefore, I can say the height is equal to half the base. So that's a pretty big deal. Let me just slow down and, and replay that for you. If each of these are 45, that means these opposite sides are equal. Okay, and since this is the whole base, the height is equal to half of it. So that's where I'm getting this formula, height equals half the base. And that's going to be the rule for any time the hypotenuse is sitting on the base. Okay, our third type of triangle is the equilateral triangle. And this is by far the hardest out of the, the three types of triangles that we're talking about today. So I'm going to show you where it comes from. So if you forget, you can always draw it out yourself. But in the end, it just might be easier to memorize. So go ahead and give yourself an equilateral triangle. 
which implies that all three sides are equal. And also all three angles are equal. So if it totals 180 degrees divided by 3, each angle is 60 degrees. Now remember, our goal is to compare the base to the height. So what do I know about this base compared to this height? Okay, well, <clears throat> when I do that, I'm not creating like some sort of isosceles triangle here. So I certainly can't say the base and height are equal, or it's half the base, or the height equals half the base, anything like that. But what I can do is just some basic trig. So let's go ahead and do this. And again, this is what you would do if you forgot this um, rule on your own. This is how you would figure it out. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to throw a random number, I'm going to say 1. I'm going to say each side has a length of 1. And you can pick 2, 3, 4, 10 million, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to say, if this whole distance here is 1, that tells me that clearly this base is just 1 half. Whoops. Okay, and my goal is to compare that to kind of the height of the triangle here. So I'm going to put an x on my height. So basically, I'm just going to do some trig from Algebra 2. I'm going to pull apart this triangle. And basically, I'm just going to cut this piece out, and I'll just redraw it. Okay, so I'm just cutting that piece out. I'm saying this has an angle of 60. I'm looking for this height. Um, this now has an angle of 30 up here, because I cut that height in half, and my height is always perpendicular. So I've got a nice 30, 60, 90 triangle. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this had a, a length of 1, I believe, from up there. I'm going to write a trig function to solve for x. So I'm going to say I want this, which is the opposite. I have the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say the sine of 60 is equal to x over 1. So the sine of 60 is radical 3 over 2. That height is radical 3 over 2. So what does this imply? Well, when the base is 1, the height is radical 3 over 2. So I can use that ratio, and for equilateral triangles, the whole, oops, the whole key is to say the height equals radical 3 over 2 times the base. Okay, so again, that's our whole key for equilateral triangles, radical 3 over 2 times the base. All right, so let's recap the three rules before we actually apply them. So the three rules for triangles, I could have an isosceles right whose leg is on the base. And again, don't guess at it. Draw it. Here's isosceles. Here's my right. Here's my isosceles. The leg is currently on the base. And you'll notice that my base and my height are equal. So base equals height. <clears throat> isosceles right whose hypotenuse is on the base. So again, draw it out. Hypotenuse is on the base, these two sides are equal. <clears throat> the height is half the base. And again, when I, when I do that, I'm creating these two to be equal. That's why the height is half the base. And then the goofy one, your equilateral triangle, where all three sides are equal, the height is radical 3 over 2 times the base. And again, if you forget, draw out your 30, 60, 90 triangle to help you. All right, we're going to attack one problem in our notes today, and it basically is going to have, you know, four or five parts to it. So it's going to be the same picture every time. We're just going to change the solid that we're going to have. So f of x equals x squared. g of x equals 8 minus x squared. First and foremost, get a sketch drawn so we know who our upper and lower are. So pause me, sketch it, see if ours matches. So I've got mine sketched out, and <clears throat> I've got my shaded area colored in. I'm going to draw in my slice. Okay, so that's my rectangle, or whatever shape I'll be drawing. <clears throat> now, I got a little lazy on you. I didn't actually find these intersection points. I just labeled it A, B, and C, D. Um, and we'll, we'll go ahead and be a little lazy on this. And we're just going to work on our setups for each one of these. All right, so our first cross-section is an isosceles right triangle. I guess I should say triangle. Whose leg is on the base. Okay, so first and foremost, sketch it. Takes two seconds, draw an isosceles right triangle with the leg on the base. And then say to yourself, what is the ratio between the base and height? And hopefully it's obvious that the height equals the base. Now remember, all volume is, is the integral of area. So that's why I'm going to start with the area formula. Now what shape do you have? Well, it's a triangle. So area equals 1 half base times height. 
All right, so I need to state my base and my height. Well, it said leg on the base, so I'm going to start with my base. My base is just upper minus lower, so if I look at my picture, that's blue minus red. So I'm going to say that's g of x minus f of x. My base equals my height. That was the ratio we just discovered. So my height is also g of x minus f of x. Therefore, my area is 1 half base times height. So it's 1 half. And now you notice your base and the height are the same, so it's that quantity squared. And all volume is, is the integral of whatever you wrote for area. And I'm going to pull out that 1 half as the coefficient. Watch your dx. And I need my bounds, of course. So again, this rectangle can move left and right. Now, how far to the left can it go? Well, to the x value of that point, which is a, and to the right here, to the x value, which is c. So my bounds should be from a to c. And that's it. And then just a plug and chug in the calculator. But we're not going to worry about that part at the moment. Let's try another one. Isosceles right triangle, hypotenuse on the base. So again, I think you're crazy if you don't sketch it. I think the sketch makes the ratio obvious. There's my right. Those two are equal. When I draw in my height, I'm now saying the height is equal to half the base. So there's my ratio. The height equals half of the base. All right, so we'll just start with our area formula because volume is just the integral of area. It's still 1 half base times height. My base is still g of x minus f of x, upper minus lower. My height is going to be 1 half whatever I wrote for base, g of x minus f of x. And now the area formula is 1 half base times height. So hopefully you'll agree that you're going to end up getting a 1 fourth g of x minus f of x squared. And again, where did that come from? Well, it's one half whatever I wrote times this height thing. Oh, I'm sorry, one half base times height. And lastly, I just need the volume. And that's just going to be the integral of whatever I wrote for area which we said our bounds were a to c of g of x minus f of x squared dx. All right, last one for the evening is the equilateral triangle. So again, I'm going to sketch it real quick, and this is the ugly one. All three sides are equal. I put a 60 in and remind myself the sine of 60 is radical 3 over 2. So the height is radical 3 over 2 times the base, and that's the whole key to this one. So again, I'm going to start with my area formula, 1 half base times height. So the two things I need to find are my base and height. My base isn't changing. It's still g of x minus f of x. My height is radical 3 over 2 times whatever I wrote for base. My area is 1 half the base times the height. So it's 1 half whatever I wrote here times here. So 1 half times radical 3 over 2 times g of x minus f of x squared. So my volume is actually radical 3 over 4 integral from a to c g of x minus f of x squared dx. Now, one last thing before we wrap up here. Um, this building, I've actually seen in person uh, myself before, is called the Kretzky Center, and it's located right on the MIT campus, believe it or not. And you can, hopefully you can see by now, they're not triangles, but they are rectangles. Um, you know, the cross section obviously is the largest at the top there, and hopefully, I don't want to draw all over it, but you can see the rectangles go across and they get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller right down to this point. But here's a great example of, you know, a real life structure uh, created, you know, has a volume with cross sections that are, are rectangles. So um, hopefully you did okay today and we look forward to some practice tomorrow. Have a great night.